Hey everybody, this is a Grumpy Old Guy Gaming. Happy Fragment Friday, hope you're doing okay. Today's run is on the Arcadia Pie server. Uh, level 25 Darkness Field, if you saw there on the keywords. I'm gonna do a bit of a throwback today. I'm just gonna go ahead and post the keywords in the uh, description there. It's Unknown New Rhapsody. If you get the chance today, please feel free. Run those keywords. Let me know how it goes. Message me here on the channel or on Discord. Easy enough to find me. Just look for a god on the Fragment Resurgence Discord or on Dot Hack Network, where I'll be posting this upload, as I do all of my Fragment Fridays. Um, kind of a fun time. Uh, still not up to the point we were at last fall there. That was kind of a, kind of a charmed time. Everybody was doing everything. But we've had some comings and goings, and more recently we've had uh, another group of people just been playing non-stop, and I wanted to take this moment to uh, give a quick few mentions to uh, three players in particular who I've noticed on the past couple days. I'm afraid I don't have any of their character names on me. I was invited to a party yesterday, but... Uh, circumstances beyond my control had me in absolutely no, no way, shape, or form, uh, in any capacity to be pleasant company to run with other people, so just gonna go ahead and say a uh, quick hello to He Who Dreams of a Jerk, uh, add a turnip and eight phases. Hopefully I got those things at least somewhere manageably close to correct. But they've been playing a ton recently, as you can see we're already leveling up out here in the field. Uh, but they've been on recently on the Discord, they've been getting together, they've been inviting people to parties, and they've been playing like crazy. And that's awesome to see, so keep it up guys. Hope to, uh, hope to be joining you soon out there. See, we took care of that camera charge real quick, coming up on some snappy grass here. Rainy evening field. Kind of a neat look to everything here. Going to go ahead and go through. We've got some snake woods, we've got some grass, we've got some sharks. Picking up some real nice experience here. 25 is about the highest board I've seen on Arcadia Pie that I could think of. Certainly the highest one I've run recently. That's good to see. Of course, our Grumpo guy, our long arm, is going to be making a repeat appearance here in a couple days for the Weekend Warrior. But I kind of neglected him last week between learning to die less and everything, and so I wanted to go ahead and get a pair of runs in with him. I do enjoy the look of this field. Coming up on a couple lead snake oids. Guess that means they were tied? Could they really both be the lead snake oid? Dumb question. Next portal gives us a chest, and out of that chest we get the hanged man. Now we're coming to the spring of mist. Usually, for whatever reason, YouTube focuses in on this when it does that little, like, second or two preview when hovering over the picture. I've noticed just about every video I have a Spring of Mist in. This is what that preview focuses on. Grandpa hopping out there. On his sentient jello self. We threw an item in that's way too high a level for level 2 Grandpa, and so the most nefarious monster in the Dot Hack series is going to chuck some uh, weapons at us, but not before getting us distracted to the point that a lead snakeoid literally walks up behind us and immediately waits for us to turn around and cast the spell. Not mad at that result by any means. You could see our buffs were wearing off there by the end, so we're gonna go ahead and re-up on our rig same and rig game, making sure our health and mana are regenerating. 
Having those abilities on a character is really great when soloing, I'm not gonna lie. It may just me being, you know, trying to be overly polite at times, but I always feel like I'm holding up the group casting those buffs on everyone. So I tend to, I tend to forego those. I'm playing multiplayer. So if you're ever in a group with me and you're looking for the regen, by all means, let me know. Be like, hey, rig seen me, rig game me. Maybe phrase it a bit better than that because that sounds sort of weird. But we don't come here uh, for me to be a bastion of normalcy. We come here for fun things, like riding a grunty in the rain. Speed boosts wear off and uh, wore off, and I was just a little too cheap to use that extra consumable. So we're gonna call ourselves the old grunty cab and head over to the portal. As you can see, the portal's not going to trip until you get off the ground piece. So it's a nice, safe way to get from A to B. Use a fortune wire on that risky treasure and pick up a mage's soul. Call our grumpy friend back. Come in here. And just past this tree line, we'll take a moment, spin around and stop. And there's our thumbnail. Now that we've got that squared away, Moving to our last portal. We've already uncovered a couple treasure chests, so we expect that that to be encountered. Get a late snakeoid and a snappy grass, we take them both out in combo. So the monsters are defeated before we get the all clear. Pick up a treasure chest, and we are right by the dungeon. Just like we drew it up. Another quick thing I wanted to say as we're transitioning into the dungeon here, uh, sort of big news on the Fragment Resurgence Discord. Go ahead, check that out if you haven't already. But, uh, friend of the channel, Dao, has been promoted to moderator, so congrats to Dao. Well earned, well deserved. If anybody's uh, had any encounters with Dao, they're, they're already more than aware that uh, Dao is one of the most helpful people you will ever come across. So that neat little bit of news out of the way. Time for the usual plugs while we're getting buffed up here in this first level. Take we care of the three snappy graphs. If you are interested in playing Dot Hack Fragment, check out the Dot Hack Network. Uh, the website is dothack.org. Link will be down below uh, for their How to Play Guide. Uh, Erroneous put it together last year, so it's the 2020 guide, and it features everything as we're battling a hammer shark here, from setting up PCSX2 on your computer to actually setting up a PlayStation 2 and playing on the physical hardware. Really good detailed guide in there. Covers just about everything you'd want to know. Coming up on a little mini treasure room. Got a bunch of bases to break open, and we will do so. Unless, of course, you're feeling fancy, in which case we are destroying the vases. We got some cooked bile out, so it's time to drop that. Heading down to the bottom of this map here. Got a little dead end here. And it's got a hammer shark in it. Real nice of them to put a giant floating shark in this room. Take it out, though. Again, picking up decent experience, even after we leveled up out in the field, it's given us seven experience. This is about the sweet spot. You could push it a little more aggressively. Especially if you're all buffed out, and you've got some solid gear and everything, but... Seven to ten experience for a large monster is a really comfortable area to be playing, uh, if you're going to solo. Still not the recommended way of playing, but it's not a bad time. It isn't. 
I know I say play in a group, play in a group, and that may come off as, you know, don't solo, but honestly, most of my runs are solo, and I'm okay with it. Still like partying up with people more, like to get on voice chat and gab their ears off. And then I come here and gab your ear off remotely. You get to hear all of my rambling hours after I'm done. So congrats to you. Really, you're a champ. Moving to the second floor now, getting our buffs back up. Coming up on the first portal in the semi-circle room, and it's a couple Halloweens! Don't be expecting a ton of Michael Myers jokes out of me here, because that's a little bit far. In fact, I'm not going to be doing any jokes at all, because these guys are going to be to hit physically. And they've got that death touch ability, so I'm not going to be sticking around too much. Literally the only spell I have on my long run is a single target water spell. So this, uh, this is going to take a little bit of time. While I do have a moment, as I'm just casting spell after spell in vain, because these guys keep moving in such a way that it switches up my target, and then their health regenerates, and then I'm like balloon avoiding stabbing me to death. Uh, this would be a good time to mention that Dot Hack Network and Resident Research both have this for servers. Both are fairly active. Both are good places to look for fragment material, in fact. I upload the Fragment Friday one to Dot Hack Network every week, and I definitely on Resident Research as well. Um, really active community. Literally anything and everything dot half related. Uh, fragmented, more or less fragmented specifically. Fair amount of random chatter and everything else there too. So if you want to come see what's going on, take some friendly folks who play this game alongside you. Feel free to check out those Discord servers. Finally get done with Halloween, we thought it would never end, but it's time to take the mask off, have some candy, and move to the next room. We knew I couldn't avoid those jokes forever. Next portal just gives us Cannibal. We're not sharing what he's eating. Big old ogre dude with a hammer. Make sure it works with him. Yeah, grab a gold mag. Check out my shortcuts here just to double check in case I had another spell. I didn't think I did, and there you go. I've got I've got Jiru Cruise and everything else is a uh, is an awakening. Which you may or may not have heard me babble about uh, earlier in the week. If you have, thank you. I, I was really happy with how that video came out. <sighs> Halloween again already. This time it's the trifecta. We get three of them in this neat little square room. And one of my favorite things about it is that cutout in the middle. It just feels kind of a unique take on the square room. It's also very limiting in the way you can move around, which is going to work to our advantage here because I'm just going to keep, keep having these guys chase me. Sort of just letting them follow me down this hallway here. Right around this bend is where I'm going to eventually make my stand. Occasionally casting as they're coming along. But right here is where I'm feeling really, really good because at this point, none of the other Halloween kids can get past the police guy. So as long as I'm casting, I'm going to keep that in place. I'm in good shape. Target the one in back somehow. I thought it was a line of sight the other. But apparently since I could see the health bar, that's all it took. Have to back up a little there as I ran out of that speed. And the Halloween guy was close enough to start attacking me with those knives. Do not run that much. If there is a decided downside to solo play, it's when you're dead, you're dead. Of course, the week I'm having a special party, I just keep finding ways to get people to help out. I do apologize for that. Or 
play, a little early with level choices, and just getting paralyzed at the worst possible times. But, though some do look at the level down as a harsh punishment, and there are times it feels like a bummer, I would remind you that the end game math is it's that much more fragment to play. So take a deep breath, smile, and remember that's just another turn on a very long and exciting journey. Finally got those Halloweens taken care of, and it's time to re-up on our buffs. Those guys were really draining in general. Always tough to fight against a monster that's specifically uh, designed to be a pain to your play style, but all the more rewarding when you overcome it. Come up against another cannibal. Good palate cleanser after that slog of the battle. Take him down quick. Not worrying about burning a consumable for our SP. Just moving into the next room. We've got a hammer shark. Yet another large enemy. Easy to hit. I'm going to need some good experience on the end. Picking up a mature egg, and an antidote out of that corpse before moving further up into an L-shaped room. Here we are once again greeted by a hammer shark. Before you know it, our health and skill points are both up to just about full. So now that grueling encounter is just a memory to us pick up a dark knight and head into the following room, which is full of our favorite breakable objects of all time, crates and barrels. Pick up a dark knight and the moon out of those treasure chests before going ahead, looting these barrels. So we got a healing potion out of those, pick up the moon out of the chest on the other side, and the man. Before finding some cooked bile and a healing potion in the crate's opposite. Finishing up with one more healing potion, and now we get to do a little backtracking. Since we're doing some backtracking, I'll take some time to do a personal plug myself. Um, if you're looking for a recipe idea, um, whether you're looking to try something new or just looking for a different take on one of the on a recipe you've tried a million times over, uh, might I suggest my friend's channel over at DadBot Delights. He uploads a couple times a week. Uh, all the recipes he does are homemade. That's just him cooking right there uh, in his own kitchen. So if you guys check it out, I strongly encourage you to check it out, like the stuff, not the Back to the action. Now we're up against a couple more Halloween things. It's gonna suck the little ice cubes out. This is where having your gear set up is really, really crucial and kind of where I've been a little lazy with my characters in life. Again, as far as my long arm goes, I really want to set up the solo and for a while just having the buffs that I had, Rick Sam, Rick Geem, and four and a half four, was more than enough to get me by. I've got my attack and defense up, and I've got health and SP regeneration. But as we're nearing level 30 here, you need to start being a more complete combatant if you're going to solo. You know, just being the guy with the pointy stick isn't enough. You gotta cast sometimes, and that's an area I am woefully lacking. So it's probably time for me to look at some different armor and stuff to diversify my skills a little more. And if that means I lose a buff or two, so be it. I can always earn more money and use some of the blood consumables. One thing I'm not planning on losing any time soon is that the blind skull, because again, if you're soloing, having that health and regen, health and SP regen, I apologize, is a lovely, lovely thing to fall back on. Sure enough, I've talked our way into the third floor of this dungeon, moving into an L-shaped room out of the gate. And we have 
have a trifecta of armor shell guns. <coughs> really cool design for the monster there. See these like golem like beings with an armor with that ball of light. They can pile some damage on in a hurry, and they've got a life drain attack, so lots of things to be careful about. We're a bit hardier than, you know, than we look, sir. So we take our chances with them, keeping our consumables high, and this is where the health region comes. Dead handy. At no point were we really in critical shape against them, and we were able to combo off a couple of times, whittling all of their health down to the point where they were pretty easy kills overall. Fairly lengthy battle, but again, not an overly dire one. We pick up some Smith's gloves out of that, which is a really nice set of gloves. Get the moon out of that chest. Gonna work to the bottom of the map first before switching up to the top. This will be the final floor of the map, as you can see our treasure room is sitting on the very right side of that little uh, four-way intersection. Pick up a mage's soul and a hanged man in this L-shaped room before moving into a dead-end room for so we'll cut away to the right. And we're greeted by yet more Halloween. Decide to take a stab at him, literally by commenting off the physical attack, and much to our surprise, we get a solid 130 damage hit on both. That's a good start. And we get back to casting from the distance. Not really trying to single one out over the other. We know that we think it's not a good attack, we should have been pretty popular when we're coming to the favor of the target. So we're just going to keep spamming our spells and whichever it hits with it. They're both coming at us kind of equal at this point. And it's a safe assumption to say that if we keep whittling them down consistently, the health regen isn't going to kick in all that well. We do get to a point where they're a little too close for comfort, and we're a little too close to the wall, so we have to wheel around and make a little distance in that comes with an advantage, though, to get you to get some solid targets in on these howlers. Before our SP bar runs out again, we've actually received one of them. One on one is a far less daunting proposition against these guys. Taking them down, picked up 8 experience for each. Not much else going on in this room, so it's time to head back to the hub and move to the top part of the map. Got a couple more rooms to clear out here. Nothing in that whole spot. So we'll head up into a large square room, super portal, and out of it comes three more Halloween. We know what we're doing. Let's stick and move. Cast a couple spells and then just keep moving in a clockwise Not the most exciting gameplay on the planet, but it is rather safe and it makes for compelling damage. You get your rapid movement, you're constantly stalked by these giant Halloween monsters, which are, you know, floating headless words in Halloween. We finally take a hit. Switch to the counterclockwise. One of the Halloween is really down though, because we managed to isolate in the, uh, isolate it in the middle of the room. Sorry, I'm not here. Why I have that one? I have no idea. It's not an easy thing to trip over when it's tough. But I found isolating one in the middle, the other is the chasing, but far too slow when you get a couple casts in the corner and you get it. So that's a nice little tip if you're looking for a way to handle these guys with a more melee or a good clap. The easiest way to handle them is play away from that, which is then you can play the play. Having consumables would be fun for elements on the end will help, as well as it's going to be an elemental hit. Always keep the elemental hits in mind. Elemental hit is the two 
best words you could see possible. I like seeing that more than dying. Dying's gonna put him in critical range is probably going to trigger a, uh, an attempt to data drain if at all possible. But elemental hits can be the outright killers. That's you can't a look death shot though, it just does such an insane amount of damage that the monster is not living. Moving to a C-shaped room here, it's our next to talk to him when we pick up an armor show. A simple battle for us there is they take about as much damage as they deal. So you can make short work of them if they don't make short work of you. Do pick up a rhythm treasure here, and inside this frosty the blue mimic we find a resurrect. One more room above us, and it's a dead end corridor that spawns a cannibal. It takes a decent whack at us, and this is the all clear for the dungeon. One of our last fights a pretty good one here. Again! No real threat, no real danger. Still got plenty of hit points, but it takes a fair bit of time. Pick up an immature egg from behind him, and a risky treasure spot. A little bit of a delay on that there. Pick up some blaze armor, another quality equipment. Check out these altars. I don't believe I did on the first pass, so I wanted to make sure and check them out. Just in case you know where they were then, those two shaped rooms. See, I got a golden egg there on that one. Little to do here, but move down to the hub room, move to the right, and collect our treasure. And that's going to pretty much wrap it up for another edition of a run on Fragment Friday here. Out of the chest, we get some forest gloves and a mage's soul and a healing potion. So a nice little recovery suite there to go with the forest gloves. Overall, fun area to run. Um, I enjoyed it. Hopefully you enjoy this video. And if you get the chance, go out, play some fragment, have some fun. This has been a Grumpy Old Guy Gaming, thanking you for watching.